Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Cyrusher XF650. First, let's talk about the looks. From a looks perspective, the 650 kind of embodies a lot of those aspects that we know and love about the fat tire e-bikes. We've got these big 4-inch tires. We have got some suspension up here in the front. It is a hardtail, so we've only got suspension up here in the front. But with those big beefy tires and the included rack, this is something that could really take on any sort of terrain. Cyrusher does offer a few colors. The one that we have here is the black and white version. In my opinion, I think the color options are probably a little bit more fun, although we still do have the cool design even on the black and white model. The nice thing about having the white rims is we do get this faux white sidewall sort of vibe. Definitely doesn't you know, take over the whole tire, so it's not a real sidewall, but when you look at it from the side, you do get a little bit of that extra whiteness there, which is kind of fun. Next, let's talk about the motor. The motor we have here is a Lenk Lessi rear hub geared motor. Now, on the website, it is marketed as a 1,000 watt motor, although they do say there that it's a 1,000 watt peak motor performance, and I couldn't find where the nominal watts were for this particular model based on my experience. It's probably a 500 watt motor. If it is a 750 watt motor, probably a lot of untapped potential here. So, like I said, based on my experience, probably about a 500 watt nominal output here. Towards the end of the video, spoiler alert, I took this bike out to some trails we had where there was some dirt, and because of all the rain, there was a lot of mud there, so I really wanted to test the traction on this bike, though the tires could probably use some bigger knobbies if that's really what you're going to be using this bike for, you know, standing water on top of mud sort of situation. The 80 newton meters of torque really was able to just kind of rip through that, and I don't really feel like I had any problems with uh, the motor performing. From a noise perspective, this bike was a little bit quieter than most of the motors that we normally get to test. I think that was mainly due to the fact that the ramp up here when you are using the throttle or using pedal assist, it's a little bit slower, very reminiscent of the XF690 that we tested a while back, where it definitely does take you up to that top speed, but it does have a sort of a slower ramp up to get there. So that may account for some of the lack of noise that we were getting from this motor. Next, let's talk about the battery. The battery we have here is a 48 volt, 13 amp hour, 624 watt hour battery. We do have these lithium ion cells in here and it takes about five hours for a full charge. I believe the website says anywhere between five to seven. I had to charge this battery up and for me it was right around that five hour mark before I got a full charge. There's a few features on this battery that I'd like to talk about. Number one is the fact that it is lockable and removable, which is nice. We don't have to leave the keys in there which is excellent because of where this would be positioned, that'd be horrible. So nice to see we've got those removable keys. We also have this quick readout right here on the top, so you can press this button and it'll show you how much juice is left in there. There's only four bars here, so not like it's too accurate. However, it is nice to get just a general idea of how much juice you have, and you can do that really quickly without having to turn the bike on and look at some stuff. We've also got a USB down here, so if you need to charge a cell phone, a GPS, something like that, you can basically use this as a giant battery to you know power any sort of USB devices that you need. And then once you've got this battery fully charged, you've got everything ready to roll, you should be able to get anywhere between 22 to 50 miles. Now the 50 miles is best case scenario, you know, no headwind, you're using low pedal assist, you're doing a lot of the work, and also probably not factoring any sort of hills or inclement weather, things like that. So could the bike hit that 50 miles? Yes, but depending on where you're riding it, it may be unlikely, and you're probably sitting closer to that 40 miles for the max range, especially if you are going to be relying on the bike for a lot of the power, it's just going to drain the battery a little bit quicker. Next, let's talk about the brakes. So the brakes we have here are Zoom mechanical brakes. We've got the Zoom mechanical brake levers up here on the front. One of the nice things about these is they do have a motor cutoff switch to it, so when we pull the lever here, it is going to cut off power to the motor. Especially when we're going these speeds on a bike that's this heavy, that is an excellent safety feature to see. And that is connected back here to these X-Tech brake calipers. They are mechanical calipers, and those are clamped around these 160 millimeter disc brakes, both on the front and the rear. Could we see hydraulic disc brakes thrown on here in the future? Yeah, that would be dope. But as it sits right now, I didn't feel like it was difficult for me to stop or, you know, the stopping power was lacking in any way. So there you go. You can stop on the spike. Next, let's talk about the gears. 
The XF650 is a 7-speed. We have got this 7-speed Shimano SIS index shifter up here on the right-hand side. You guys know I'm a big fan of those. And then that is connected back here to this Shimano Tourney derailleur. Right out of the box, we didn't have to do any sort of adjustments, so when you see me in the ride test a little bit later going through those gears, that was straight out of the box, and we have not adjusted it. I believe there was a little bit of a rough shift between 6 and 7, but everything else was actually very smooth out of the box. Next, let's talk about the extras. So the XF650 does have a few extras that I would like to point out. Number one is going to be the fenders that come with the bike, both on the front and the rear. These aren't the nicest fenders that we have seen, and the way that they attach to the front fork specifically is a little bit clunky. We've got these adjustable fender boss attachments here on the front tubes, and then that is going to connect back here to the fender itself. Not really a huge deal, and definitely something I've seen on other bikes, but probably something that could be improved or even looking at upgrading the fenders overall. But other than the way that they attach and maybe possibly looking at getting something that's a little bit sturdier in the future, they are wide, they cover the tires, they keep you fairly dry, fairly clean, unless you're going to be doing the things that I do later in this video. The other extra that I would like to talk about is the rack. So the rack does come here, and it is a little bit of a smaller rack. Smaller in the fact that all of the tubing is a little bit on the smaller, lighter side. We do have plenty of attachments for pannier bags and other mounting points to pretty much attach anything you'd want to on here. We've also got a little bit of a top shelf here that runs the length of the rack. Personally, I don't know if there is too much of an advantage of this, say, over having some tubes that run down the long side, but just something to note. We've also got a rear reflector on the rack back here. This would be nice to see upgraded into a light, hopefully something that would tie into the battery. That would be awesome. Speaking of lights, we've also got this front light up here in the front where front lights go. Now attaching this to the front fork is very typical of a lot of the bikes that we've seen here, so nothing too wild. The light itself, I feel like, functioned pretty well. I don't know if it's bright enough to where I would want to ride around in pitch blackness, and this is kind of like the only source of light that I have. But if I was running around in the neighborhood and there was some other auxiliary lights, I feel like this does a good job of lighting up pretty much most of the stuff that's in front of me. And then also, just as a safety feature, it lets people know where I'm at, and uh, so that would be an additional benefit to having that light there. Next, let's talk about the essentials. So the bike does ship with everything you need to put it together. We've got this little multi-tool business going on. That's right, you know the ones. We've also got the owner's manual and the charger. Really the biggest part of assembly here was rotating that headset back so it faced the right way. Then we tightened that back down. Then we installed the front wheel and the front fender and the light. Other than that, this thing was pretty much put together. Next, let's talk about the suspension. So the 650 has this front fork suspension. This is a coil system. We have got hydraulic lockout and preload adjustments, 80 millimeters of travel and 35 millimeters of deformation. Now, if you are a mountain bike enthusiast, you will know that 80 millimeters is not enough to take on any sort of jumps, and especially when we're looking at this bike being as heavy as it is. Pretty much twice the weight of most mountain bikes that are quote-unquote recommended to be doing, you know, jumps and things like that. This is not going to be enough for taking it to the bike park and jumping in on things. If you recall, I did that with the XF800, and though it worked, it is not designed for that, so it's not recommended. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is a hardtail, so we don't have any rear suspension on this one. The other part of suspension that we like to talk about are the tires. Now, with these ones, we've got these giant 26x4 Chao Yang tires. They've got a max air pressure of 20 PSI, and I imagine you could probably take them anywhere closer to 5, 6, 7, somewhere on the downside. Something you probably have to do a little experimenting with. And then we've got regular Schrader valves on these ones. As far as the tires themselves, the grip, like I mentioned, is something that's designed for moderate off-terrain. I felt like I had really good grip on the pavement. I had really good grip on some of those harder packed surfaces, but once I got into the water and the mud, I found the tires to be a little bit lacking. And that makes sense because this is not necessarily designed to do those things. If you wanted if you wanted to do something like that, you'd have to look at getting some aftermarket Kendas or something like that. The other part of suspension we like to talk about is the butt suspension. And right here we have got this Lenklessy sports saddle. Nothing too fancy about it as far as the fit. I felt like it fit me pretty well. We've got a decent fall off between the back of the saddle and then where your legs can kind of dip over, head down to the pedals to do the work. If I was keeping the bike long term, probably not something I would necessarily have to replace. But with saddles, as you know, it's all about matching up the saddles to your sit bones. And so for me, it worked. For you, it might not work. You know, saddles are something that are pretty easy to change and something that's pretty customizable no matter what bike you get. 
Next, let's talk about the controls. The 650 comes with this S700 3.7 inch LCD. This LCD is grayscale, so no color here, but we do have a few readouts that include charge indicator, speedometer, odometer, trip odometer, the level of pedal assist, and errors if any. And the levels of pedal assist is gonna be controlled by the three button keypad over here on the left. We've got up, and we have got this middle button, and then we've got down. The down goes down, and the up goes up. Just to the left of that, we've got two extra buttons, and one of those is for the lights, and the other one is for the horn. The horn is pretty loud, so just be warned, the horn is pretty loud. Which, of course, is an excellent safety feature, but somewhat of a con when you do it in your garage by yourself on accident. Yeah, somewhat of, somewhat of a con. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. As has been a theme with most of the Rusher bikes, they are typically designed for the taller rider. Not necessarily the frames, but because we've got those big 26 by 4 inch tires, it really does bring the frame up quite a bit. And so some of the most important measurements to pay attention to are going to be the reach and the standover height. So the reach here, not too bad. we got 20 inches of reach, and that's something that is pretty graspable for most people. The biggest barrier to entry, no pun intended, is probably going to be the standover height. So the standover height here is 33.5 inches. And if you're somebody that has back problems, knee problems, things of that nature, being able to, you know, hike your knee up that high might be an issue. So you probably want to look at something like a step through. And if you still wanted to kind of get that bigger, beefier, fat tire vibe, there are some options out there for you. So that standover height is just something to keep in mind. We've also got a 20 inch minimal saddle height and a 27 inch maximum saddle height, 28.5 inch width here at the handlebars, a 49 inch wheelbase and a 75 inch length overall. Like I said, this is a big bike. As far as where these riders who would fit on such a giant bike would be riding, this is a bike that is going to be most at home in the urban slash urban off-road sort of areas. If you have to go through some grass, I think this would handle it pretty well. If you also want to take it on some hard-packed bike trails, I think that would also handle itself pretty well. But once you started to kind of go off the path a little bit more, I feel like the bike itself could handle it, but you'd probably want to upgrade those tires. So I see most people using this as a fun bike, something that you could convert pretty easily into a short distance commuter depending on the terrain and kind of where you're going. And this is going to be for somebody who has got the space to store the bike. So we don't get to fold this bike up. And even if we remove that front tire, you know, it gets us a couple inches. But even then, you're still talking about six-ish feet of, of room that you need available. But if all of that sounds doable for you and you are still in the mood, let's go ahead and send it outside to myself for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test on the Rusher XF650. So we're going to go ahead and power it on. But we're going to turn the pedal assist off so we don't have anything going to the throttle. And we're just going to run through this as if we're a regular bike. And shift down quite a bit. I always forget to do that before I start. All right, so we're in first gear here. Now, with these bikes being so big, they are fairly easy to pedal, have a decent pedal geometry to it. So even though this is a heavier bike, this is, you know, it's pretty easy breezy to just kind of pedal around. Now, I wouldn't want to be going through any hills or any sort of like terrain probably and also pedaling, but just cruising around in the street, it actually is not too bad. One of the other things you'll notice is we've got the we've got the uh, speed that will show us, even though we're not using any pedal assist. So it's showing us we're going four or five miles an hour. That is very cool. Now let's see. Let's go into fourth. First through third was pretty easy shifts. A little bit rough going from third to fourth, and into fifth. Nice and smooth. Six, nice and smooth. And seventh. Seventh was a little bit, a little bit rough there. Try that one again. Go back to sixth. That was a little bit better. Maybe I just caught it on a bad rotation. So yeah, so as far as pedaling this bike, fairly easy without power. Definitely not something you're gonna be breaking any speed records in, but if you're just kind of cruising around, this is uh yeah, it's no big deal. Go ahead and stop real quick. Let's go ahead and 
try out the pedal assist. So I'm going to use the throttle first just to kind of get us going here. That way I can shift down a little bit here. Now the nice thing about this pedal assist is it is not very fast. It's sort of, I mean, it picks up pretty decently, but it's not jarring. Kind of a nice slow ramp up to that top speed. Now this is gonna control how fast we can go with pedal assist or with the throttle. So even if we're going with the throttle, it's still gonna take us to that 10, 11 miles per hour. Now when I got the bike, I did have to switch it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. It wasn't too difficult here in this screen. I think I had a screen that was similar to this and I couldn't figure it out. I'm not sure why, because it was, it was uh, yeah, fairly simple. So I've got it figured out now. I'm a learning demand these days. So now I know how to get in there and you know do some stuff. So Pell Assist Level 1 is going to take us up to that 9-ish, 10-ish miles per hour. Let's go ahead and go to Pell Assist Level 2. Now I believe you can also adjust the amount of levels you have so right now it was on zero to five i had it on zero to three earlier so pedal assist level two is going to take us to about that 14 15 miles per hour i'll head down the long road you guys know the long road we were here the other day all right pedal assist level three now i'm, I'm in pedal assist level or i'm in uh, gear five over here probably need to push that up to six that feels pretty good. So six, pedal assist level three, marry up pretty good. Let's go pedal assist level four. Definitely getting a nice ramp up. Probably got to shoot up to pedal assist level, or I'm sorry, gear seven. It's one of those dual pedal assist bikes. So again, about to that 22 miles per hour. We'll go ahead and hit pedal assist level five. And that is going to take us up to that top speed of about 26. Now it's reviewing here at about 24 and a half, 25, but it just, it feels a lot faster. So I whipped out my GPS earlier and I found out that it was actually getting me going closer to 27, 28, even though this is still only showing me, you know, that 24 and a half, 25 and a half. So something to keep in mind, you might need to uh, check that. I don't know if that's something, uh, you know, I talked about being a learned man earlier. Maybe I jacked up something with the magnets when I was going here into the advanced settings. I don't think so, but just something to be aware of. You may be going a little bit faster than the bike is telling you you are. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights. Just going through a little crowded area. Just a little extra, extra visibility. Got that 250 lumen front light. Which isn't necessarily too wild, but it is nice to have that, uh, you know, just that extra safety feature there. Let's go ahead and skedaddle. We're going to go ahead and head back down the long road. Let's do a little braking test here. Wow, that was pretty good. I wasn't positive how fast I was going. I feel like I was going maybe... Uh, 16 17 and it stops very quick even on this slick concrete we've got those zoom mechanical disc brakes and then we've got those 160 millimeter discs both in the front and the rear you know doing the lord's work over here let's go ahead and do a go ahead and do a big boy get up to that 20 ish yeah, because when I was going, I was like, man, this feels fast for 22, 23. Let's go ahead and give her a break. Nice and controlled. No skidding. Probably about 12 feet. And I feel like if I want to hammer on one, let's go ahead and do one where I just hammer on it. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Just checking my GoPro on the back, make sure I didn't lose it. I haven't paid attention to it the... Uh, the whole time so let's go ahead and just really hammer on this bad boy i 
All right. And that was closer to that nine, nine foot mark for stopping. Did get a little bit of a skid there, but it was very controlled. You know, I, I, I you know, I put my legs out a little bit, but handled this stuff well. You know, when we were going close to that top speed. So let's go ahead and we've ridden this bike around. You know, pretty much the same spots we rode the scooter around. So I think uh, I think we need to put it through. Uh, through a little bit of mud, a little bit of off-road. Nothing crazy. This bike was designed, you know, to be, to get too wild, but let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't get on some dirt. In the beginning, I debated not going out to the dirt because I was like, you know what? There's only one person that's responsible for cleaning the bike after that happens, so that's me. And I didn't really want to, but you know what? For you guys, for the hardcore people, the people here, you know, what time we at? Probably at like 15, 16 minutes, maybe a little bit more. You guys are troopers, all right? So for you guys, I'm doing it. Howdy. All right, so yeah, just a little, just a little GoPro action. Nothing, nothing wild. Just uh, everything looks like it works, right? Cool, cool business. Nothing I hate more than a broken GoPro. All right, well now we got that settled. How fun! Good thing this isn't a GoPro arm review. I'd been like, man, this GoPro arm review is not going well. But it's a bike review, and the bike going places this GoPro arm can't go. So hang out here in the mud a little bit. I'm contemplating getting very dirty right now, just for fun. So let's see, let's see what we can do. Let's see what sort of trouble we can get into. All right, okay. All right, a little bit of kicking. Whoa, boy. Now this isn't a full suspension bike, right? It is a hardtail, so we don't have kind of that full suspension, but it is nice just kind of whipping around. Whoa, whoa there, boy. My left wrist over there is like, please don't hurt me anymore. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> so we are cruising. We are sliding. Sliding for my life right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Whew. Just gotta make sure my tire is still on back there. So we're getting into uh, getting some slick stuff, and it is uh, it's kicking around. Let's hit up into this. Oh yeah, give me a little bit of that traction. I told you guys. I told you guys we get dirty. Cruising now. Too bad that other GoPro got smashed. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. It probably would have been super muddy at this point. Man, why he stopped talking? It's because I'm afraid for my life, guys. I'm afraid for my life. Mainly because I do not want to sprain my wrist again. It is almost healed. And that'd be super dope if I could hit the mountain bike trails up again on my mountain bike. I will definitely be getting a shot of my legs after this, though. I mean, the fenders are doing a pretty good job of protecting me, but I'm putting it through some, some gnarly stuff here, so... Oh boy. Whew. 
Back to the city. Back to the safe zone, baby. So you know what, all in all, it handled itself pretty well. These tires weren't really designed for that sort of sitting water on top of mud scenario we put them through, so I'm not gonna give them too hard of a time. If that's something you're into, you're like, hey, I need to, I just need to take this bad boy through the mud. I would probably look at getting some beefier tires, something with a little bit, a little bit bigger knobbies or something. But yeah, other than that, I feel like she handled herself well. A lot of fun to ride around on. Let me go ahead and pop off real quick. Show you my legs. Cause I'm not gonna go through all that, guys. And you know, oi, oi. Let me see. Can you see that? That is some mud. That is some business. I do it for you guys. It's for the hardcore people. You know those guys that clicked off at five minutes? The guys that clicked off at uh, six minutes? They don't get to see the fun stuff. Oh, I don't get to see the fun stuff. And that is going to do it for our review of the XF650 from Cy Rusher. If you want to know more about them, I'll have a link down to their website below. And if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns or complaints or just any thoughts in general, let me know down in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.